Hey guys, it's Rhonda from Rhonda's Creative Corner. And on today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make faux eggnog. And I call it Grinch Nog. All right, so let's get started. Some of the items that you're going to need for this project are paint brushes. I got these glass cups from the Dollar Tree. And you will also need some lime green paint. You'll need some lightweight spackle and you'll also need some piping bags and tips. I will put all of the supplies and links down in the description for you guys. All right guys, so you're gonna put a little of the green paint on something. I just had a piece of cardboard and I put foil over it just to make sure that the paint didn't go through the cardboard. And you're gonna take your paint and you're going to start painting inside of your cups. So as you're painting along, I found out that making long strokes was the best way to get your coverage. Making shorter strokes kind of made little marks where the paint would be off of the glass. So if you continue to make the long strokes going around the entire cup and even making sure that you get down in the bottom of the cup as well to make sure that you have full coverage. So I want to send a special shout out to my friend, Mrs. Thelma Nichols. She actually taught us how to do this in Rhonda's Creative Circle the other day, and I decided that I wanted to teach it on YouTube. So thank you, Miss Thelma. I will be putting Mrs. Thelma's Etsy link in the description as well. Please make sure to go over there and you can get you some amazing signs for your wreaths. She makes some awesome signs. All right guys, so this was my very first time ever painting glass. But as I continued to do each glass, I figured out more and more the best way to get the best coverage and getting the best coverage with the long strokes did the job. All right, as you can see there, I got some paint on the outside of the cup. I use my finger, but you can just really take a paper towel and wipe it off. Um, make sure that you get anything on the outside of the cup so that your cups will look perfect. You don't wanna have any kind of paint or anything on the outside of your cup. You want all the paint to be on the inside. So you want to get as many cups as you need um, for your place setting. I have six place settings that's going to be at our table. We actually needed eight, but I didn't want to have to make all of those cups and do all of that. So <laughs> I just got six cups. So continue to paint all of your cups the same way, making sure to make long strokes and to get the paint all inside of your cups.
The stickers on the bottom of the cups from the Dollar Tree were actually easy to come off. All of them came off pretty easy. I really didn't have to scrub anything off of them, which really made this process easy. Make sure to take all of the tags off of the bottom of the cups. Okay, so right here, I was looking inside and I was like, it needs a second coat. But one of the things that I learned when doing this is to actually let the cups dry. Don't try to do another second coat with the coats wet because it really doesn't work too well. So while the cups were drying, one of the things I forgot to tell you that you needed is you need some foam board. And I got this foam board at Dollar Tree. So what you're going to do is you're going to just trace each one of the cups however many you have you're going to trace six circles I had six so I traced six circles on my foam board and then I'm going to cut them out with the exacto knife So when you're cutting this out, you wanna try to make the circle as perfect as possible. So I was just kind of moving the foam board around as I was cutting. I also needed a new blade on mine. So if you can have a sharper blade, that would help out a whole lot. But just make sure that you try to get it as smooth as possible as you're going around. Once you get the foam out of there, the circle out of there, you can go around and cut it even more, you know. As you can see, I had to go in because my knife was dull or my blade was dull and I had to cut around the back side of it too. So having a sharp blade makes it a little bit easier for sure. Alright guys, I will continue to cut my circles out until I have all six of them cut out. Just make sure that you're going uh, nice and slow. Make sure that you're cutting all the way through and make sure that it's nice and smooth. You can always get it even smoother once you get the circle out. All right, so here I am cutting out the last one. And then after I get this one cut out, I'll let you guys know what to do with these circles. So I wanted to make sure that the cups were dry enough, so I went to get the blow dryer to blow dry the cups out. So one of the things as well, if you find that you don't want to do a second coat, you really don't have to, but y'all know I'm a perfectionist and I wanted everything to be just nice and perfect if I could get it that way. So I just took the blow dryer and I blow dried each of the cups. As I'm sitting here doing the voiceover, I'm laughing so hard at Mello. He is really having a good time down there. So if you saw me filling in the cup, I was just trying to see if it was dry and it was. 
So I just took my paintbrush and I made a second coat. On some of the cups, when I went down further, it wasn't as dry, so it kind of took some of the paint off. So you have to be really, really careful. Again here, you can see me, I'm making long strokes, making sure that I'm getting the coverage that I need. And I just continue to do each cup. Make sure to turn your cups upside down kind of so that you can see the bottom of the cup to make sure that you have the coverage that you need. That's what I was doing there. Alright, so just make sure to check all of your cups. Make sure that you don't have any parts that are not filled in with the green because that will not look right. All right guys, so now the time to put your pieces of foam in there. So once I tried to fit that in there, it was actually too big. So I went in and took the X-Acto knife and I just cut off some on each side. So I kind of tried to keep it in a circle, but once you start to form it with your hand, you'll see that um, you can form it back into the circle even though if it's a point on it after you cut it. So I'm just taking it around trying to make it as round as possible to fit inside the cup. So as you can see, it was still a little too big. So I just went in again on each side, made little slits, and then I took my hands and I formed it back into a circle. So to be honest with you, long as it fits in there, it's going to be okay. I would say try not to make it too small where it falls too much into the cup, but we're actually gonna be putting the light, light spackle on top of this so nobody will ever see how this looks, okay? Now, I just said nobody will see how it looks, but y'all know how I am. I always say that. So, it was a little piece that was sticking up. I just went in and cut that excess piece that was coming off of the foam. So, we will continue to do the same thing, just shaping these pieces of foam to be able to fit into the cup. You will do these for all of the cups that you have prepared. All right guys, so here we are, our last one, doing the same things, just cutting the edges, forming it to fit inside the cup. All right guys, so I didn't do this on camera, but I went ahead and I cut out Grinch Nog on the Cree Cut. And I will put the link to the font in the description as well. I got it on the font and I just put in Grinch. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I will definitely put the link into the description so that you guys could have this font as well. 
um, but I'm just here I'm just going to get ready to weed all of the letterings and then once I weed all the letterings I will then add them to my cups If somebody has some tips on the um, parts that we weed out not being so sticky on your hands, tell me what you do with yours. I usually just put them on my hand and then try to get them off. But sometimes it's so hard, especially when filming. You see me rubbing it on my jeans. <laughs> if you have a way to make that easier, let me know what you guys do. So what I'm doing here is I actually had a dash in between Grinch and Nog and when I was weeding it out some of them did not have it so I'm just going in and taking the dash out. So if you saw me put the transfer paper on my jeans, the reason that I did that is because it's a new piece and it's the strong hold. I didn't want it to be too much for that particular vinyl, so I just put it on my jeans a couple of times to get some of the sticky off and um, that helps for it to not stick as strong. Alright, so I just took the end of my scissors and I rubbed it up against the vinyl onto the transfer paper so that it would stick. It is a tool, but I have no idea where mine is, so I just use the edge of my scissors, okay? So I am a real stickler about trying to get things straight on my cups when I'm doing transfers. So what I did is I lined up the bottom of the cup on the line on my board to make sure that my cup was straight. I also put the handle down on the table so that I would know that when I do each cup, if I do it the same way, I could possibly get the Grinch Nog in the same place on each cup. So I just used my hand to rub down on top of the Grinch Nog to get it to stick to the cup. And it did really well. I didn't have to use the end of the scissors or anything on there. But just make sure as you're pulling the tape up that, it, um, that everything is sticking. Alright? So you're going to continue to do this same thing to each cup. All right, so once you get Grinch Nog on all of your cups or whatever saying that you want to put, you're going to get your lightweight spackle in your piping bags. You're going to put the lightweight spackle inside of your piping bag to get ready to frost your Grinch Nog. And once you get the lightweight spackle in, you want to press it all the way down into the tip. You want to make sure that you don't have any air pockets in there because it could mess up your frosting once you're making it. So as you see, I'm making sure that all of it is going down and that there's no air pockets within it. So here I am, and this is my very first time doing it. So as I went along, I did get better with doing it. So 
So as you can see, I'm just going round and round and round. On this one, I believe that I ended up putting more on there. But um, what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing one of my straws and I will put the link for the straws down in the description as well. And I'm just cutting the straws in half. Right, so I'm just placing the straw down at an angle and like I said this was my very first one y'all so it's look at him he's so crazy CW he's messing with the Grinch hand I was slapping the Grinch hand but anyway so yeah so I go in and add some more I believe or I actually pushed it down he was saying babe it looks fine but y'all know how I, I am I just have to try to make things as perfect as possible I don't know why I'm like that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So here I'm just opening up the piping bag and I'm trying to stick the uh, spackle down in there as far as I can so that I won't make a mess on the edge of the bag. So that second one went a lot better than that first one. Again, I'm just pushing the spackle down, trying to make sure that there's no air bubbles. Now that I'm looking on the film, I can see that there were a few air bubbles, but you wanna try to make sure that you don't have any of that. And here's my third one. And I am having to use both hands to be able to push the spackle out. I could see that the speckle was not on the edge of the cup, so I went in and added some around the straw and the edge of the cup. So I'm gonna try something different on this one. I'm actually going to start in the middle of the cup and then go around. And this is what worked best for me, doing it this way. And then going back around and back up. That one worked really good. I have to go on the side again to get some on the side but it worked really good. I'm just kind of filling in a little bit there. As you can see right here, I'm just using the tip of the straw to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So right here I got some red sparkles. I actually got these from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just going in and sprinkling it all around on the top of the Grinch Nog. It looks really cute. And it kind of filled in a little bit some of my spaces that I had in my spackle. 
And one of the things, this does take practice getting your spackle perfect, but I think that I did pretty good for my first time. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. One of the things I think, so next time that I do this, I'm going to get some more um, larger bags that I put the speckle in, um, the piping bags. I'm going to get larger ones just so that I don't have to keep refilling as much. It's not really a problem because the speckle is really, really soft, but that would save on time a little bit if I didn't have to keep filling it up. So on here, I'm just going in and adding a little bit more because I felt like it was down too far right there and I wanted it to be a little bit more fuller. So this is my last one. I'm pushing all of the speckle down as far as I can and I am going to go for it. I'm thinking that this was my best one that I actually did. My last one. <laughs> you know what they say, practice makes perfect. I'm going to go around again, kind of filling in the spaces. And the main thing is that you want to um, get your spackle on the edge of your cup. You want that to be covered. You don't want the foam to show it all. So now what I'm doing is I'm going in and adding more sparkles and I'm inspecting each one of them. I see that this one needed some more on the edge so I'm just taking my lightweight spackle and I'm putting some on the edge. And I'm just using the tip of it to make sure that it's kind of blending in. See, I poured too much on that, but that's okay. <laughs> One other little tip that I wanted to give you, if you're able to have a little bit of spackling in there and able to push with one hand, it does help a whole lot with getting the spackle on there easier, being able to turn the cup. As you can see on this one, I'm going in and adding more spackle. 
I felt like it was down too far and I needed to make it a little bit higher. And one of the things you want to do is spackle is not cheap so you want to make sure that you clean the spackle off of your spatula and that you also close your spackle really really tight. And look at me here I go again messing with stuff. I wanted to leave this on here so that you guys can actually see how I create. I want don't want you to think that I'm like this perfect person that everything comes out perfect that I do. So I like to leave this kind of stuff on my video so that you guys can see that I go back and be messing with stuff. I'm always trying to fix stuff and make things as perfect as it can be. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to push that notification bell. If you need some high quality resupplies, make sure to go over to our website at www.rondascreativecorner.com. All right, guys, until next time. Bye, guys.